In this recording, we're going to have a look at fine editing tools. So what we often don't do when we're first getting started is use any of this fun stuff. In this video, we're going to start introducing some of these tools, why they're here, and how you can use them. I have a rough assemble prepared for us to use these tools on, but before we try and do anything meaningful, I'm just going to go somewhere where I can just construct a few quick edits. So what some of these tools do are allow you to move edits around, uh, move the contents of clips around, and um, alter the start and end points of clips and all this sort of stuff. This can be very handy when you just want to shift things. So there's a few things to bear in mind. Now, one, at the moment, my timeline is set up so that I can manage my audio and my video separately. They're not linked by default which is helpful if, for instance, what I want to do is overlay media. Now, you can see here if I just use the V tool and drag that nothing good happens here. But if I use the N tool, which allows me to roll the edit, that I can then change the in and out points of a clip without making a big mess of my timeline. Not that bad. I don't believe you. So you can actually alter a performance by sort of saying, hey, um, I'm actually going to start this um, reaction shot while this person's talking. It's not that bad. I don't believe you. And then say, for instance, that shot then feels like it lingers for a while and I want to actually move into this shot more quickly. I can do the same thing here. I can just say, oh, well, I actually want to cut to this more quickly. And then maybe what I want to do is speed up the transition between these two shots Obviously, what I can do here if I want to is just lift out any extraneous bits and pieces, you know, and just say, oh, well, this is this is going to be um, a part that I just bring out by using my uh, extracting. So we now have a few changes to the edit. And all we've used here is this rolling edit tool. Now, when you're rolling an edit, you're kind of in an overwrite mode. So you're still just overwriting what's on the timeline. You're not rippling content, but you're changing the in and out points of clips in their relationship to each other. You can also use the roll tool on your audio tracks if you want to, um, but it's more likely that you're gonna use it on, on vision tracks because you're um, hopefully going to have your audio separated out so that you don't uh, see this in this way. But this allows you to modify your, your, your cut points. So if you say just on a standard um, shot, 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 assemble edit, and you want to start dynamically moving how um, clips flow into each other. How long do I have to come up with the money? I'm not a fan of that, that noise. And I can just use this, right? But I want to show you something else. So if, if say, for instance, I actually have... Uh, linked selection turned on and I come here to roll this edit it will do it to both the audio and the vision at the same time now if you're doing um, overlay edits or what some people might talk about is things like J cuts or L cuts where you kind of form a kind of an L or a J by having your footage kind of interleave like this you may not want to have your audio and your video selected at the same time in this way there are two ways to manage this. One way is to simply turn that link selection off, and then you should be able to manipulate individual tracks and deal with your audio and video separately. The other thing you can do if you really want to, if you just like having everything stuck together all the time, you can actually um, command L to unlink um, a selection, and then on an individual basis, you can make changes to that while still having link selection be the dominant force in your timeline. So you can do that if you want to. It is definitely um, possible. But just remember that if you are editing in this mode, everything you do will be about keeping those links. And you may find that when you're trying to do fine editing that that is a real impediment. So I would suggest that you consider turning that off. Uh, these little friends up here, um, the ones that are probably important to you, snapping in the timeline, that means if I want to find something, if I'm just dragging around, it'll help me by snapping to things. Um, the other thing is whether or not you have the link selection. Everything else here is kind of like, yeah, whatever. Um, but those two things are probably really, really uh, helpful and important to understand. Your timeline settings are all here, but you know, you can expand all your tracks. That's something that might you find, you might find that 
really helpful to get started so that you're actually looking at the clips and seeing what they are. Um, personally, I don't, I don't find this to be helpful to me. I find it visually distressing. <laughs> so this is me, right? Um, so, you know, you do, you do what makes you happy and you can also, um, add a few other things if you want to, but let's just, let's just, um, I'll put this back to a bigger size, um, so that you can see it because it's probably for you. It's probably more fun. It's not that bad. I don't believe you. How long do I have to come up with the money? So here we have um, a situation where I have uh, audio that needs to be extended or it needs to be replaced with Atmos. And thankfully I have enough sound on that track to cover. How long do I have to come up with the money? Two weeks. So say for instance, I have this clip here. Let me just scooch back a little bit. Yeah. Where she goes. How long do I have to come up with the money? Right? And we start. <laughs> What I can see here is that uh, she really starts talking right at the start and then there's this kind of uh, long pause at the end. If, for instance, I want to kind of go inside a shot and slide the contents around, there are a few tools here. Um, so you'll see that there's um, a couple of little basic icons that help you understand the difference between slipping and sliding a shot. And I'll show it to you. So. I'm going to turn the link selection back on because I do want to make sure that my audio and video go along for the ride together in this case, if I may. If it doesn't do that because the separation between the tracks is preventing it, you can select them both and um, hit Command L to link them up. When I go through this process of trying to slip shot, what you can see is that I'm changing the in and out points and it's using the vision track as a guide, right? And when I do this, you can see that what's happened is I've dragged this performance way forward. Maybe that's not my intention. If I drag in the other direction, you can see that I can move the performance backward. So it's really sort of looking at this in a graphic way and changing the, uh, the timing of that performance. And the good thing about, I guess, seeing the waveform like this is you can kind of get to see where her dialogue sits against the edit and all that kind of stuff. And you can make little subtle changes like this. And now normally the most common place to find this extremely useful is when you're trying to sync up action between cuts. So say for instance, you're, you're doing like a, a fight scene and there's a couple of different shots where somebody's about to throw a punch. They're in the middle of throwing the punch and the punch lands. Sometimes you need to really finesse shots like that to get everything feeling like it sort of hooks up and is part of the same action. One of the things that's really helpful when you are in this, this slide mode and you start sliding is that you get to see the in and out point of the shot that you're touching plus the last um, frame of the shot before it and the first frame of the shot after it. And that's very helpful for continuity. This is more useful for continuity than it is, say, for instance, for dialogue. Um, and timing. But if you've got something on the timeline and you think, well, I actually just want this to move a little bit, this tool is still very handy. And that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm just going to check that and see if I like what I did. How long do I have to come up with the money? Two weeks. That's not too bad. Um, so that's one of the things, right? So that's the um, slipping a shot. Sliding a shot, as you can see from this little icon, is about taking a shot and moving it around on the timeline. So all it does is say, I'm going to take the shot and I'm just going to move it around. Boop, 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 boop. I can put it here, I can put it there. The shot itself has the same duration, but where it sits is going to be determined by where you drag it to. So the thing is with these fine editing tools is that they inherently require you to interact with the um, graphic user interface and actually do things like dragging your clips. Um, that's not necessarily the case in other tools such as Avid, where you can have this tool selected and use the J, K, and L keys to move a clip, which is, you still have to select the clip, but you can move it around um, with nudging keys and all kinds of stuff. But in this case, we are just picking it up and grabbing it. Um, and I don't think that this is a huge problem. Let's have a look. Do I have to come up with the money? Two weeks. It's just a little more punchy. I actually think that what I liked more and let me go back to um, unlinking these. And I'm going to go back to my rolling edit tool. I'm only going to select this one clip. And I'm just going to give a little bit more of a separation there. I have there. to come up with the money. Two weeks. 
It's a subtle difference, but it's a difference. So you can use these tools to make some changes. We've looked at the rolling tool. We've looked at the slip in the slide tool. We have not looked at the ripple tool. The ripple tool says, hey, what I'd really like is to move something around in such a way that it ripples edits. So one of the things that's really important, and you'll notice this, is that when you are using a tool that will inherently have a time change function to your edit, that it comes up yellow. When something is an overwrite or you know, over record edit, it will come up red. Now that convention is also consistent to other tools like Avid. Um, and I'm not sure at what point it became consistent, but it surely is. When I use the, the, um, the ripple tool, what I'm doing is I'm saying, I wanna change something about this clip. And in this case, you probably do wanna have sync turned on. And that's because if you lose sync because you're doing a ripple edit only on your vision track, you'll be slightly annoyed with yourself. In fact, why don't we make some mistakes to show you what that, what that looks like? Let's have fun, hold on. So when you do a ripple tool, say I wanna start that clip 12 frames later, it's going to, yes, begin that media 12 frames later, but it's going to snap that media back to this cut point. So you're not um, making a hole in the media, that hole just gets eaten up. And when you do that, because of course we've lost the sync, um, this clip is here, it wasn't involved in that process, it's still sitting there the way it was before. So if, say for instance, you do want to use a ripple edit tool and you're using it on things that do have um, synchronous sound, you probably want to make sure that you are actually doing it in such a way that you can um, manage your, your edits. So for instance, if I want to move this, it's going to back that up. Or if I wanted to say, for instance, start it later, it's going to move it all down. And that's the Maybe outcome. Two weeks. So then if I wanted to say, for instance, um, go instead to a roll edit and only work on this top layer, I can just come up here and say, okay, I'm gonna do that. And then I still have a different, a different um, outcome. How long do I have to come up with the money? Two weeks. And that doesn't feel too bad to me. And this is really important. Like when you're doing fine cutting, there's an element of this that is about your own personal sense of timing and, and intuition. You have to get to a point where you feel comfortable with the way the edit flows. That in and of itself is kind of a skill. And I think that it's probably wise to stop and, and think about this um, in a way that is useful for you. So when I'm looking at a cut, in fact, let me go back and look at this, this version of the cut, which is not quite ready to be, it's not a finished cut, it's just a test. Let's have a look at how this flows and, and what what's going on. Look, I'm really sorry your son lost his job, but I truly am. Then why can't you be more understanding? We've been understanding. But he'll find a new job. And when he does, you're more than welcome to come back. But all my friends are here. Look, you might not believe me, but the public nursing home, it's, it's not that bad. I don't believe you. How long do I have to come up with the money? Two weeks. So when I look at this, there's breathing room and there's probably too much space in some instances and not enough in others. And one of the first things that jumps out at me is this edit here. I can really see when I go and scooch in on this and I will go back and uh, make this big again so that you can enjoy that. Hold on, expand the track. When I look at this, I know that the audio of the performance is all sitting there nicely, but I also can see that it feels rushed. To me, when I look at how these performances sit against each other, I feel like she needs more breathing room. And so in this case, I might want to do a ripple edit. And for me, if I'm doing a ripple edit, right, and I'm using the B tool, I accidentally selected a tool from a different um, universe, I have a universe. Um, what I want to do is look at this edit and think about giving it some speed, right? So I'm thinking, okay, I want to go and grab that clip and, and pull it back a little bit. Maybe not a lot, but a little. And then I want to check and see what's going on. So as I do that, you can see that it has pushed all the other edits down because I've linked the clips and I've made sure that I'm not going to lose sync on anything. If you're not sure if you've done that, have a look around quickly because if you see any little red and white bloody da numbers and stuff, that's definitely something to be concerned about. But here, because I've turned that on and I've done it, done a ripple edit, I can just quickly go and understanding. But he'll find a new job. 
it still feels a little strange, and I think part of it is because um, uh, this particular clip here, the sound coming out on that probably isn't fully resolved. So because I only want to grab this one bit, I'm just going to pull that out on its own and see if that helps. We've been understanding. But he'll find a new job. So sometimes you can hear things that you can't see, and one of the things that's really helpful is using your solo tool. So when you solo a track and go checking it out, let me just zoom in so we can have a looky look, because I think that there might be a breath here that's giving me the poos. But if Yep, okay. So here what I can see is that there is a tiny little breath, and it bothers me to no end. So I'm just going to get rid of that breath, because it's right at the start of the clip. But he'll find a new job. Now, when you have something that just doesn't want to um, resolve nicely, you can do what I would consider a soft cut. So this is a way of kind of making a very, very small fade on a clip, maybe four frames, six frames, just to get around um, any weirdness in, in audio. So when I do this, and I can see once again that there is that tiny little peak there, so I'm just going to get around that, um, and then I listen to that. But he'll find a new job. That bothers me less.